This Sunday, we'll see the return of A fixtures for the England rugby team. And I, for one, absolutely love it. Hello, amateurs. Welcome back. Taking a little break from our Six Nations series. Tons of content on the channel at the moment about that. So hit subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on any of those episodes. England A are going to be playing Portugal uh, A on Sunday at Welford Road. Kickoffs one o'clock and it's been uh, streamed live on YouTube. I'm going to stick the link in the description to this video so you're all ready to go and watch. It should be a really cracking, entertaining game. Now, I grew up with A fixtures being, a, you know, a, an absolute staple of the international calendar. All the greats came through. All of them played A fixtures. It gave them great experience, great um, understanding of what it's like to come together and represent your national team. And I think that's a real missing piece in the England jigsaw. So I'm really, really glad that it's back. Now we're going to go and have a good look through the team that George Skivington, I assume, along with Steve Borthwick, has selected for this fixture. But just my overall thoughts, I think it's really well balanced, you know. I think it's got a nice balance of youth and experience. There have definitely been times in the 18s past when, you know, it felt like it was just an under 23s. They were just looking at the younger players, but they've got a nice balance here in this side, I think. It's also a nice balance of power and pace. There's some absolute whippets and there's some absolute monsters in this team as well. Uh, George Skivington said they've had a, an amazing week's training at Loughborough. So they should be well prepared. You know, a week's a decent amount of time benefiting from the fact that there's no premiership games going on at the moment. Again, separating club from country in the calendar, I think, is only a benef can only be a beneficial thing. The sooner we sort all that mess out, the better for everybody. OK, let's take a look at this team. Is there some cracking players in here? OK, starting at Loosehead, Harlequins, Finn Baxter. Joe Marler cannot speak highly enough of this kid. He seems to be a baby-faced assassin. Like, he just goes after it every single scrum. And he's quite a destructive scrummager as well. So he really goes after tight ends, and I like to see that. J.B. Bermire has got a ton of England caps already, and he's always played well for England. Big hooker, but very sort of mobile as well. Joe Hayes, I'm a fan of. I think he's, he's long for a tight head, and I think sometimes his scrummaging can be a bit inconsistent, but that is improving year on year on year. And I think for Leicester Tigers this year, his work in the loose has gone to another level. Like, he's really, really outstanding around the park now. Rusi Tuima, Exeter Chiefs. A proper heavy tight head lock, locking alongside Charlie Yules, who's captain in the side. And this is the this is where we talk about the experience coming in. I wonder whether they've looked at the players in the current senior England side and seen where the age profile is relatively young and then made the captain of this side in that same position. So, for example, we've got George Martin and we've got um Oh, my God, the name's escaping me now. It's all Leicester second row. Uh, you know who, you know what I mean. Tell me in the comments. His brother's coming through as well. Anyway, those guys look good to be taking the England second row on for a number of years. So maybe fill the second row up here in this England A side with somebody experienced to lead the side. Into the back row. And we have got absolute gas at six and seven. Tom Pearson. Season before last was, um, or sorry, last season, was absolutely tearing up the premiership for London Irish. And he took a while to settle, I think, in uh, Northampton, but he's doing pretty well now. He was also the um, one of the unfortunate ones who got to play in that first World Cup warm-up game. I think that's his only cap to date, when England were absolutely stuffed in terms of their physical preparation with the long-term you know, goal of peaking at the World Cup. So I... Dearly hope that's not going to be his one and only cap and um, and that he'll get another chance because he's a quality player. Pearson's quick. Pepper's even quicker. This guy is an absolute whippet. So if there's uh, some open play in this game on Sunday, watch out for him tearing up the pitch. And they are absolutely beautifully balanced out by the thunderous Alfie Barbary. There's something different about it when he carries the ball, like compared to so many other players. Like, it's just a level of brutality and physicality that you rarely see. And he's been uh, outstanding this season for Bath. 
So I'd love to see him get a good run of games and really push on and, you know, push for a place in that, in that full England squad. I think he's very close to it. OK, onwards into the backs. Harry Randall's been a quality nine for a long time. Exciting, nippy. I mean, people maybe would question his game management. I think that's improved as he's as he's matured as well. You know, his real point of difference is the sniping, is the quick tap and goes, all that kind of stuff. Um, alongside Charlie Atkinson from Gloucester, making up a midfield potentially there with three Atkinsons, which is always nice, nice and fun. Uh, Will Muir on the left wing, the horse from Bath, he's been playing really well, and there's been a lot of calls for him to have made, you know, be playing in the starting side for the Full England team. I'm not sure he's quite there yet myself. I think he's got a few things that he needs to work on, but his ball carrying in particular and his finishing uh, is outstanding. Young centre partnership here. Max Ajomo doesn't start all the time for Bath, but he's a different kind of a player. Like He does things that you don't see other players do. He's got a, a wild skill set. He makes passes that don't look possible, let alone capable. You know, he's um, he's a different beast. I'd like to see, you know, his real nuts and bolts of being an international centre come together. Um, and then I think he'll get an extended run, but he's a phenomenally exciting player. Alongside Oscar Beard, who's coming to the Quinns team this year and has just gone from strength to strength, he's been outstanding, tall, rangy, um, plenty of pace. It looks like he's got a real good, like, competitive streak to him as well. Like, I've seen him down, chasing down people into the corner, making try-saving tackles. He looks like a real competitor. And then Caden Murley, who's been on the full England team's radar for quite some time. Struggled a bit with injury this year. Otherwise, potentially, if he carried on his form, he might have been in the senior England squad as well. And then Josh Hodge at fullback, who has been fantastic for Exeter. He is such a beautiful runner. He just glides across the turf, makes good decisions, and um, I'm excited to see him in open space in this game as well. We'll take a quick run through the bench now. Sam Riley, the young Quinns hooker. Tara Kafar, who has, uh, like most young props, he's had an up and down time. He came on and he had a great scrum against the Poco Fajor, who, you know, burst onto the premiership scene. The following week, he got, he got his, um, he got, you know, <laughs> He got dominated by somebody else. So that is the life of a young prop. You'll come up against different challenges and you can be dominant in some circumstances. And then on a different day against a different opponent, who some people might even think is weaker, you might struggle. So that's the, that's where these guys get their experience from. Josh Sheffer Scott, the Exeter Chiefs behemoth. He is a big man. And I happen to be watching an Exeter Chiefs ses uh, training session the week he arrived at the club. I was speaking to the S&C coaches and, you know, they were excited about <laughs> how big he was, you know, rightly so. Carry some, carry some sort of extra weight. And um, I sort of suggested to them, you know, are you going to be looking to try and get some of, them up, some of that off him? And they were like, no, I mean, we'll, we'll look at the numbers, you know. He can move. He's absolutely moving. And, you know, if he needs that weight to scrummage, then 100% we'll, we'll you know, it won't, we won't be desperate to get it off him. So clearly, you know, he's, he's pretty much the same now, I think, as he was then. So um, still a very, very big man. Interesting that England have gone with him ahead of Aaron Painter. A very similar tight head, also at Exeter Chiefs. Uh, another very, very large, heavy scrummaging tight head. Talking of large men, and this is a type of player that's somewhat gone out of fashion, I think, in the professional game. Ben Bamba is ginormous. Very thick set, very heavy. Um, but can move as well. But we're seeing a return to more powerful second rows. And uh, Ben Bamba's certainly one of those. Greg Bissalau and uh, Kalen Englefield is the, is the young Gloucester uh, scrum half. Jamie Shilcock has always shown class. And um, just he's one of these players, I think, who can play lots of different positions and fullback and always looks classy in each. But I worry about him. He might become a utility player. Hopefully not, because he's he's a serious talent. And Ollie Hartley, the young Saracens centre, very tall, and has done a great job this year for Saracens in the Premiership. He's been a brilliant player. So 
there is a lot to look forward to uh, from this England team and beyond. Um, they are playing against Portugal. And as I said in the intro, it's Portugal A because their senior side are currently in the, mo in the middle of the European Championship. And they've also got players playing in France. I'd have liked to have seen it being marketed as Portugal A because it's really kind of unfair on people that might turn up expecting to see the team that played in the World Cup. That's not going to be the case. I still think this is going to be a very good and valuable fixture. And I think rugby fans would have, would have appreciated that. But the fixture overall, I think, um, one, I think it's incredibly valuable for the A-team, as I said in the intro. I think it's incredibly valuable for these players to come into a foreign environment, get used to working together, um, coming from all the different clubs and continue their development. And I think it could be a really spectacular game. Portugal have continued to play as they did in the World Cup. They've scored some remarkable tries in the, in the European Championship at the moment. And I think it could be a wildly exciting game on Sunday, one o'clock on YouTube. I've linked the, uh, the stream down below in the comments if you want to find it easily. But what do you think? Let me know about this team. Let me know if you think it's the right team to face Portugal. Let me know if you're a fan of the A program overall and which other, you know, maybe some creative fixtures that England A teams could, they could play against. Uh, let's have that all in the comments down below and I'll join you there for a conversation. Give this video a thumbs up. If you don't mind while you're down there, it helps other people find it. And you can subscribe there. You can watch that one next. And don't forget to get out and play.